Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Kenna. I'm an intern over at the Denver Botanical Gardens, as well as working with the Denver Medicinal Plant Society. Today we're gonna to make ephedra tea. Now the plant I have in my hand is ephedra, or ephedra sinica in the botanical name. Um, it's a cool plant because it's more of a hybrid between a conifer and a vascular plant, in that it does have some vascular tissue, but it makes cones as opposed to seeds. The other cool thing about this plant is what you see is what you get, so just stems. Um, but the cool thing about these stems is that they're photosynthetic, so this is how the plant survives, is by using these stems. Um, so the plant, the medicinal properties of this plant are mainly in alkaloids, known as ephedrine and pseudoephedrine. You may have heard of these before because they are made in weight loss pills or capsules. Um, and the cool thing is, is that they're stimulants, so they act on your adrenal glands so that you have this rush, kind of like what coffee does to your body. So this, a nickname for this plant is Mormon tea because the Mormon culture does not really allow caffeine. So instead, Mormons in the past would use this and make a tea out of it as a stimulant, just like coffee. So it should be known though that this plant is gentler than the capsules of ephedrine or pills, but it has been used in the past for overdosing and causing deaths of some people. So please be cautious when you use it. Always make sure to ask a doctor first because it could interfere with some of your medication. So what we're gonna do today is make a Fedra tea. And it's just like what we did the other day with our um, lemon balm tea, is that we're gonna use the top of the plants, the stems, as our medicinal properties. Now, ephedrine and pseudoephedrine within this plant are alkaloids. And like any alkaloid, they can be pulled out with hot water. Um, just as we saw with other com components like tannins or flavonoids, um, these alkaloids are really good to be pulled out with both acid and hot water. So what I'm doing right now is pulling the stems and putting them in a cup. As you can see, I have some hot water on the stove over here. Um, it's not quite boiling yet, but it's getting there. So I'll take this time to talk a little bit about um, herbalism and herbal medicine. And that in the past it's been brushed off as a pseudoscience because there's been so much mythology and folklore around it that people have a hard time believing it actually works. The nice thing is though, is that because of things like antibiotic resistance, genetic testing, as well as cancer research, um, herbalism is gaining more popularity and showing more scientific studies that it actually is working which is great. So if you wanna use these videos as a leg up to try to get into the herbalism world and work on making your own medicine, more props to you than ever. Okay, so we've got the stems in our cup. What I'm gonna do now is just like making any tea. So I'm just gonna pour the hot water in. So as you can see, the stems are kind of falling out or over the cup and that's fine. It's just like any loose leaf tea, it's gonna go everywhere. So the hot water is in the cup now. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let it sit for a while. Just like any tea, it needs to steep. Um, you can put a cover over this to help it steep faster if you'd like, but there's really no limit. Um, I'd say give it about 10 to 15 minutes. That's always a good number for tea steeping. Um, the stronger you want the flavor, the longer you'll have to steep, of course. But then it's just gonna sit there. And the hot water, again, is gonna pull out those alkaloids, ephedrine and pseudoephedrine, so that you can use it similar to coffee as a stimulant. So that's pretty much it for today's episode. Um, thanks again for watching, and feel free to like and subscribe, and don't forget to comment below about what recipes you want us to do next.